draw maps. His name was Claudius Ptolemy. Claudius Ptolemy. Look him up. He was one of the first to draw maps in that region. In that region, not over here in the Western Hemisphere, but in that region of Africa, Europe, uh, North Africa, etc. This book right here is called The Geography of Claudius Ptolemy. Let's go to page 31. Ptolemy drew ancient maps and he kept writings. He wrote about the maps that he drew and where he traveled. This is page 31. It says, At the outset, when the writing of the journey from Garama or Garama to Ethiopia, he says that the Septimus Flaccus, having set out from Libya with his army, he came to the land of Ethiopians from the land of Garamatis. In the space of three months by journeying continuously southward, he says furthermore that Julius Metronus, he says setting out from Liptus, Gop, Magna, and Garama with the king of the Garamantes, who was beginning an expedition against the Ethiopians by bearing continuously southward, came within four months, etc., it says the Agisimba, the country of the Ethiopians of the Rhinoceros, is to be found. Okay, and then he go on to say each of these statements on the face of it is incredible. First, because the Ethiopians are not so far distant from the Garamantes as to require a three months journey, seeing that the Garamantes are themselves, for the most part, Ethiopians. So basically, I'm showing you right here. That he traveled all over, okay, and he drew maps, ancient maps, okay. But but continuing, it says, let me go down here. It says, it says, wherefore we conclude that it is not un unreasonable to suppose that those men either spoke in hyperbole or else as rustics, or rustics say to the south or towards Africa, to those who prefer to be deceived by them rather than take the pains to assertion the truth. So basically I'm showing you that Ptolemy um, traveled not just in Europe and um, what we call North Africa or the Middle East, but also in Africa, okay? And he was one of the first to draw maps. And when you get this book, you can read about his journey where he traveled and the maps that he drew and the rivers and the mountains that he discovered. With that being said, let's go to page 94. Page 94. Let's see what he wrote. Page 94. Right here it says, Mauritania. And you all know the country of Mauritania. It says right here, chapter 2, the location of Mauritania. The first map of Libya. It says Mauritania. It says right here, um... I'm going to start right here. And it says the river of the Amsegar River, of which the following is a description. And then Ptolemy goes on to give a description of all of these rivers and locations. Okay? But watch what it says right here. He says the mouth of the Seagar River, 
But look what it says below. It says the mouth of the Osirif River. The mouth of the Osirif River. Okay, Osirif River in ancient Mauritania. Okay, ancient Mauritania. And then you go down, it says right here, the Arsenaria Colonia. And then when you go further down, he gives you a list of all of these locations and rivers that was located in Africa, okay? Africa, West Africa, the mouth of the Sabas River, okay? You go all the way down right here. Once again, it says, it right here says the mouth of the Gullus River. And then again, it says right here, where, where you see it highlighted, Osirif, okay? Osirif, okay? The mouth of the Osirif River, Osirif. And then below it says, it is bounded on the east of Africa along the Ampsagas River. Just wanted to bring that out, just to show you where Osiris was located at. That region was in Africa and what we call the Middle East today. It was considered to be one region. That is why it says when they went across the Euphrates, it says, and the same region, when you read 2nd Ezra, it says, and the same region was called Osirith. Okay, the same region. The Middle East and Africa was considered to be the same region. And right here, you see that it was a name of a river called Osirith. I'm done.
That's where Jasper Younger comes from. Jasper Younger comes from the Gabon people. He's Issachar. He's a Mexican hero, slave hero of Mexico. From the Wikipedia, this is Gaspar Younger, right here. These people traveled to, to a land where never mankind dwelt. Okay, let's go ahead and read verse 43. Right. That they might there keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. And they enter into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. So understand that the Euphrates River is north, northwest of the continent of Africa. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So they, <coughs> and they enter into the Euphrates River by the narrow passages of the river. Right, read verse 44. For the Most High then showed signs and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. That they might keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. That they that they might keep right there, keep their statutes. What does that mean? Not y'all. Keeping keeping the laws, statutes and commandments, which is their what? Go ahead. Okay, so they were carried out. They were carried away as prisoners. Uh huh. So they were prisoners, and then they took their counsel among themselves. Right. They just, how they do that? They were prisoners. Genesis 49 and 21, and there's a mystery connected with this tribe too. And we're going to pull that out. All right? Some people have been teaching that Naphtali is Argentinian Chileans. Absolutely incorrect. We're going to teach the truth on that. Go to Genesis 49 and 21. Read that. Now Cyrus king of Persia that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred all his kingdom and put it also in writing saying. Now you got that sis? Now you see that the king that word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah. You see the prophet Jeremiah was dealing with the king. So the king got to understand like oh this, these are God's chosen people. Right? Go ahead and read verse 2. Thus saith Cyrus king of Persia the Lord God of heaven hath built him in a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. See that? So he understood that there was a prophecy in Jeremiah. Do y'all know exactly? I don't know where exactly goes. I can't go straight to it. There was a prophecy where Jeremiah told this king that he was going to be the king of, 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 over all the earth, over other nations, other nationalities. That prophecy came back. So he understood that, okay, this is the most high God, the living God of the Israelites. So this is where you come to this conclusion of letting Israel go back and build their temple in captivity of them. Read verse 2 again. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, I'm thinking she's trying to say well, how they're in captivity when they 
they came over here and they're doing a council amongst each other, you know, right? Um, when they came to America, right? I don't, the Native okay. American Indians, they was in captivity when they first got over here. No, 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 no. they were in captivity under the Persian Medes. Right. Okay, That's now, now, like you said, the prophet said Jeremiah is telling them that they can go back. The king has let the Israelites know the northern kingdom that they can go back. Amongst themselves, and, and then go back to Jerusalem. They, 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 they took the council amongst themselves, like, now nah, we out of here. They bought. Next slide. This was uh, King Cyrus. After Syria was conquered, King Cyrus gave the Israelites a liberty to return to Jerusalem in order to rebuild again. A small remnant returned, however, a great majority went abroad. That's what we're reading about Second Exodus 13. This is how the Israelites took counsel among themselves, okay? Remember, remnants of Ephraim returned with Judah during exile and stay with us. Uh, made a way for them, showed them a path through Issachar, being able to, that was their gift, you know, being able to tell the times and through the signs of the, of, through the sky, through the most high's calendar, held still the flood until they were passed over. Okay, uh, 45. For through that country, there was a great way to go. A long way to go. Right? Namely, of a year and a half. It took them a year and a half. That's a long time. You know, with ten tribes, you're gonna, I'm gonna put a number on it. We don't know, you know how many people that was. You think it was just one boat? Nah. It's a long a year and a half. It's a long way to travel. Just kind of think about that. Okay, read on. It's the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salamanassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. So came they into another land. And then you see, we read that account in Ezra. Right? Now go ahead and um, go ahead and read verse uh, 41. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. Now read 41 again. But they took this counsel among themselves. So that, that, that we're talking about the northern kingdom, these ten tribes took counsel among themselves. What does that mean? If they took counsel amongst themselves, what does that say? Think tank. They came up, they came together and made a decision. That sound about right? Well, you got y'all got anything? Sound about right? Okay. Read. Uh, <coughs> they would leave the multitude of the heathen. Leave who? The multitude of the heathen. Which is what? The, what another nation. Right, read. And go forth into a further country uh -huh. where never mankind dwelt. Where what? Never mankind dwelt. Those are key words right there. Where never mankind dwelt. <laughs> So you got some people, oh, uh, you know, we got this thing over oh, Northern Kingdom, you know, they're, they're still in Africa. Well, what they say? Well, what? But never mankind dwelt. People are always been over there in Africa. Mm -hmm. So how could the other ten tribes still be over there? The scripture just said, where never mankind dwelt. That's clear right there. Or oh, I'm missing something.
for mankind dwell. That's clear right there. Or oh, I'm missing something. Am I missing something? But never mankind dwell. Everybody's on the what? Eastern Hemisphere. They traveled to a place where never mankind dwell. Well, no, we're not done. Let's go to 2 Kings. Hold that. We're going to 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 11. Verse 11. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria. We just read that, right? And put them in Halah and in Harbor by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of Medes, Medes, Persian and Medes, because the because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, uh -huh. and all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded, and would not hear them, nor do them. So just just giving a passage showing proof of you know, when they were going through, when they were in that captivity with the Persians, right? And the king did carry them away. That's just, that's just a precept, basically. That, that was off of verse 40. We just just kind of expounding on the history a little bit, right? Let's go back to uh, 2 Ezra. Chapter 1, we read verse off 41 again. Go ahead, bro. These two different captivities, it's serious. Captivity and the Medo Persian captivity. Right, you have the Syrian, then the Persian and me. So you can get right after each other. Then we'll right, okay. Right. Let's go get the. And now when they shall begin to come. So now, so from the top, they hadn't been left it. But Ezra's saying we will begin. Remember, to mobilize millions of people does not take a day. You had to get what? You had to get ships. You had to get provision, provisions for the ships. That took a lot of organizing. Many times we were reading. This is going, oh, it took a, a day. No, 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 no. Imagine if millions of us were to get on ships to go somewhere. That's not a day's event. Might take a couple of years to organize everything properly to make sure everything is right. This is what we're reading here. On to the next slide. Ahead. And embarked from Ezion Gabir. Stop. Ezion Gabir is what you want to deal with. Ezion Gabir. Keep that word in mind. Go ahead. And embarked from Ezion Gabir into the Red Sea. Into the Red Sea. Go ahead. We voyaged with 10 ships. Stop. 10 ships. That sounds so familiar. Get Ezra's real quick. Second Ezra's 13. 10 ships. Why 10? <laughs>
Sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the middle would be lost. The middle would be lost. The ship's aground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle With Gilligan, the skipper too The millionaire and his wife The movie star and the rest are here on Gilligan's Tribal Gabby and Gadites. Who's Gabby? Native American Indians. Native American Indians. Oh, okay, read on. And the half tribe of Manassas. Half tribe of Manassas. What did you say, sis? Yeah, Genesis breaks that down. But we'll have to do that with a class. We'll definitely do that. But you said it, though, since the tribe of Manassas was who? The Cubans, the so-called, so-called Cubans. That's the tribe of Manessa. Okay, go ahead and read on. Which is the Northern Kingdom. So we're talking about Native, Seminole Indians, and so-called Cubans, which are the, which could be considered the Northern Kingdom of Israel. Read on. And brought to Hala and Hara and Hara and to the river Gozen unto this day. And that was Medes, as we read in Second and Second Kings. Alright, let's go back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 13. That's a good job. You say, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not trying. Yeah, of course. I'm part of the next number. I'm not trying. I'm 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 trying. Bishop. Let's read 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 and 35 once again so our listeners can determine for themselves if God did away with the law that said the husband rules the wife. Let's see. Let's start at verse 34, please. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. According to Pastor Nick, that's done away with. Where are we reading? The New Testament. <laughs> Who's speaking? Paul in the Spirit of Christ. Next verse. And if they will learn anything. If the woman will learn anything. Let them ask their husbands at home. Let them ask their husbands at home. Go ahead. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So Pastor Nick is trying to say that this is done away with. I'm really confused. You see, Christianity is nothing more than racism, white supremacy. Exactly. That's what I've come to realize. Absolutely. It is. So is this done away, Pastor Nick? Is this done away? Yeah. I, I, is this done away? In if, Jesus. if you don't mind, if you don't mind, He's Bishop. asking a question. Can I answer that? Bishop, I suppose the Bible is saying here, and I want to believe that, when our women go to church, they just have to keep quiet. No question, no nothing, even the praying that Paul was talking about and the prophesying that Paul was talking about in 11, the word the Bible is using here is to speak. So if a woman is praying in the church, she is speaking. When a woman is prophesying in the church, she is speaking. 
So when Paul said women should not speak, that means what he said already in 1 Corinthians 11 should not be done in the church. See how he's saying the Bible contradicts itself. Exactly. That's what he's trying to say. You know say. what's amazing about this scene? <laughs> What we just read here, where is there a scripture where it tells the man to be silent in the churches? Yes, and, that do, and that destroys your equality right there. No, you, you don't get my point. What I mean is this. Do you agree with me in 1 Corinthians 11, what I read, that women are allowed to pray in church? Number two, that they are allowed to prophesy in church. Do you agree with me? Okay. We explained the prophecy in Titus 2, where it said, let the age women teach the young women. Come on, Bishop. You don't do that That's to wrong. the word of God. That's wrong now. That's you wrong. don't do that to the word of God, Bishop. Okay. Now, the okay. issue of prophecy goes back to the book of Joel. When God says, in the last what? days, I am going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. I will read it to you in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And this is going to say women can lead men in the church, can right? The topic uh, about. That's what the topic. Can you help he is not read that with yeah. the topic. Uh, brother, yeah, you are, we are talking about women Bishop, speaking in church. Pastor, You have some Mr. Carl that passed the straight like Jake, like Judah. A lot of them. And some, remember, remnants of Ephraim returned with Judah during exile and stay with us. And those are the ones that retained, that retained themselves. The ones that remained scattered abroad and came over here, they diverse. It's diverse speeches. It's multi- Some Mr. Carl that passed the shit like Jake, like Judah. A lot of them. And some, remember, remnants of Ephraim returned with Judah during exile and stay with us. And those are the ones that retained, that retained themselves. The ones that remained scattered abroad and came over here, they're diverse. It's diverse speeches. It's multiracial cultural features among the people on the side of the world. No, Nehemiah not. Book of Nehemiah, chapter 9 and verse 1. Yep. Now in the 24th day of this month, the children of Israel were a thousand years old, which does not validate the Bible whatsoever. So if you believe in the Barren Strait theory, you don't believe in God. Because they say that the Native Americans crossed over from Asia into the Americas through the Barren Strait. So they're Asians or Mongoloid peoples. If you say that, you do not believe in the Bible and the white man is your God once again. Read that, please. Clearly the, the age old. Clearly the age old all came, clearly the age old quote all came for over from the Bering Strait theory is no longer valid. Uh -huh. As the author has pointed out in this volume, even blood types and cranial formations vary in, vary in many of the tribes. Watch this. Suggesting extremely cosmopolitan, Mo uh -huh. multiracial characteristics among our Native Americans. What's that mean? No one call out. What is that saying about them? What happened? I don't get a lie. I gotta get a lie. Just, just keep this short, man. You be doing Deacon Yaw stuff. Northern Kingdom version. We mix them among the nations. Thank you. Say it again. Say it slower, though. We mixed among the nations. When? Uh, since the time of Assyria, and even so, even before a little, and even after. Yeah, and even after. Yeah. Babylon also. So we. So yeah. So you have North looking America so diverse because they mingled themselves. Some look just like some of y'all in the Judah in the room. Some look like straight Judites, and some look more Asian. Some have fine hair. Some have woolly hair. Some have. No high cheekbones. Some don't. Because we mingled. They mingled themselves for centuries among the nations. They retained their dark skin, a lot of them. But when they came over here, some of them mixed around with Esau. 
Some of them mix around with the Assyrians, mix around with the Syrians, mix around with the Iraqis, the Medes. Remember how the Medes look? Look up Hawaiians real quick. Remember, they were placed in cities of the Medes. The Hawaiian people got hope. Some of them, because remember, um, during the plantations, they took some Ephraimites from Puerto Rico as slaves into areas of the Philippines and Hawaii to work on plantations there. So some of them are. Look at them right in the middle right here the, with the hand. With, look at their eyes. Go click that picture right there, the middle one. The middle picture. Yeah, look, look at them. You have some Gadites look like that. They're Asian. No, they're not. They mingled with these people. They mingled with them. Go over. See, so you have, and you have some that look, yeah, look like that. Look at the man over there on the right. So I'm explaining to you that Ephraim mingled themselves with these diverse people. So you had different bone structures, different features among them. That they mingled themselves. They mingled themselves with the Egyptians. Mingled themselves with the Syrians, with the Assyrians, with the Babylonians, with the Medes. On numerous occasions. Come on out. Go back to that book again. The characteristics, meaning their features, among our Native Americans. Because the book told you that they were keeping Israelite customs. But they had different features, diverse features, because they mingled themselves among the people. And I've done so for many, time, many times. Remember, as Judah, we cleaned house. We started over fresh. Even didn't start fresh. They remained like that. Then came over here looking like that. And brought some of those customs over here. And the reason why we was able to start fresh is because we had records. Right. We had records. That's why when you go into Christ now, what Christ said, Christ said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. together. Yep. Because we ain't got no records today to say, you know what? This brother looks suspect. What's your genealogy, man? Who is your father? What father you come? What's your forefather's name? Right. You, can go you understand? So, so now you go, you go and trace it back and, you know, you could tell me I came from from so-and-so, I'm from the tribe of Ephraim, my father was so-and-so, and we go in the book, and we're like, well, okay, you good. You know, so we can't do that. That's why right. Christ said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. You understand? And in the, in the end, the angel is going to separate some of y'all, going to separate y'all. Some of y'all might be heathen thinking you're all Israel. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you know what, what, what make, how you, what going to make you a heathen, and you're going to know it deep inside you a heathen, if you break in God's laws. You understand? If you don't keep you, if you because remember what the scripture say: if you marry, if if you marry a heathen, he said that heathen gonna take you away from serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. So you brothers that marry sisters, you questioning. I wonder if she Israel. I don't know. She says she might be Israel. If she pulling out, you pulling you away from God laws. Guess what? She a heathen. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the brothers that marry sisters. Yeah. You know, if the if the brother pulling you. You sister, you marry a brother, you know, and he pulling you away from God's laws. Guess what? He might be a heathen. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's that's a test. That's a test you could give a brother today yeah, or yeah. a sister. Yeah, because uh, many of our brothers that go through that, yeah, there is three tribe. They say the sister is Ephraim. No, nah, Manasseh. No, nah, uh, 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 what's the yeah, other side? Benjamin. Yeah, Benjamin. Asher, Asher. Or, uh, uh, you know what I mean? But they never say Levi for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. 